We now have another way of examining the claims of evolution, and that is through contemporary genetics. The Human Genome Project has been responsible for the groundbreaking sequencing of human DNA. So do its discoveries support or undermine Darwin's theory? Dr. Francis Collins, its former head, is an eminent biologist and a Christian. When Darwin put forward his theory of evolution by natural selection, he could not have known how strongly that would be supported by the study of DNA. But it is dramatic the way in which our modern understanding of that information molecule has, right down to the details, fit so precisely with what Darwin had in mind. As we compare the DNA of multiple species, including our own, uh, we can see the evidence for descent from a common ancestor in a truly compelling and digital way. One could still argue, and some have, that those similarities between species is simply a reflection of the fact that God used the same motifs uh, over and over again with slight modifications. But that explanation does not hold up to close scrutiny when you look at the details. One of the most compelling examples I can think of is the nature of our own chromosome 2. It has a very odd feature that in the middle of chromosome 2, there is this funny DNA sequence that should only appear at the tips of chromosomes. It does appear at the tips of all of our chromosomes, but in chromosome 2, it's also in the middle. Well, interestingly, when you look at chimpanzees or gorillas, they don't have a chromosome 2 like ours, although the rest of their chromosomes look extremely similar to ours. The one exception is this. They have two smaller chromosomes. And when you put them end to end and fuse them together, you get exactly what we have. And of course, that would also predict that those special sequences that are only supposed to be at the tips might in our chromosomes still be there as a DNA fossil, as a footprint of this fusion event that presumably happened probably four or five million years ago. Unless you're going to postulate uh, that God basically put those funny sequences in there to test our faith, it is extremely difficult to look at that evidence and not conclude that we are in fact sharing a common ancestor with chimps and gorillas other primates. And so as soon as one is willing to set aside an insistence on that ultra little interpretation of Genesis, then you arrived at a conclusion which is actually quite comfortable for me as a believer and for me as a scientist, that yes, Darwin was right, and a brilliant insight he had, but that all he was really doing was to deduce the mechanism of God's creation. In fact, it's the case that shortly after Darwin published his amazing book, The Origin of Species, many leaders in the church embraced this, recognized this as an answer to the how question of God's creation, but in no way saw this as a threat to the idea of God as being the author of all of this.